This is the Financial Beat, helping you hit all the right notes in your financial plan. So sit back as we strike up the band. The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler starts now. Welcome to the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, VP and Chief Investment Officer at Rick Gary Financial, wherever you are in Southern California today. Thank you so much for spending a little time with us. My name is Ryan Stutz. I get a chance to talk to Logan every week on this show. It's all about getting you to and through retirement. And Logan, it's great to be back with you. Yeah, favorite time of the week, Radio Week, and uh, always great to be back here with our listeners and, of course, with yourself, Ron. Excited for it. Got a lot of good things to talk about today, and uh, I know you're going to display a lot of wisdom, or uh, maybe I should say uh, you're going to impart a lot of wisdom out there. Uh, the number to call is 888-823-PLAN if you'd like to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Logan. That's 888-823-PLAN. Call that number right now. Leave your name and your phone number. You'll get a call back, and then you can have have what we call a discovery meeting, an opportunity to get to know Logan. He can get to know you. And uh, all importantly, it is a one-on-one -on -one conversation specifically tailored to whatever you want to ask and whatever you want to let him know about you. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make that happen. And Logan, in the news recently, as inflation soars to 40-year highs, there's a lot of talk that the Fed is going to start raising interest rates more quickly than most originally be believed that they would. Should we all rush out and buy a new home or refinance our existing one while rates are still low? <laughs> that's a great point. Um, you know, it is it is one of those things that's scary for a lot of people because we've all gotten so used to you can go out there and get a two and a half percent mortgage, right? I mean, yeah. that, that I mean, those are always good times, right? But I think um, it is one of those circumstances we're seeing interest rates slowly go back up and maybe faster than we want. But I know I was talking to a good friend of mine who's a mortgage lender, and that's what he was saying is a lot of the uh, first time buyers are back up in those four to five percent ranges, which is uh, happened pretty quick. So I think we're going to continue to see that throughout this year. And I wouldn't recommend just to run out and buy to hurry up and beat interest rates. I think it's always a good idea when looking to buy or refinance to, to look at what, what the situation is and are you ready to buy a home? You know, I think that's the biggest thing. The refinance, Ron, I don't know about yourself, but I know quite a few people who have taken advantage of that because, yeah. Yeah. you know, if you're over, you know, 40 years old or 50 years old, you remember a time when, um, you know, there was 10% interest rates on mortgages, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. this is when you see two and a half percent or maybe even 4%, I know some of us are getting a little discouraged, but when you look at it from a historical standpoint, it still is relatively low to borrow money. And uh, that's always that's always a good sign for people that are trying to borrow to buy those homes or to re, you know expand their businesses or whatever type of loans you're getting. It is always great when you don't have to pay back uh, nearly as much as you as you are used to having to pay. Yeah. And if you're thinking about running out and buying a house also, you got to consider the fact that prices are still astronomically high. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. With interest rates as low as they were, it's great because yeah, over, you know, over a 30 year loan or a 15 year loan, you're going to do pretty good. But like you said, you're paying, I mean, the home, the home prices from basically, I mean, 2016 to, to now have just catastrophically just went up, right? I mean, just, just, amazing how fast everything's went, especially in the last two years. So like you said, you're borrowing money cheaper, but you are paying a little bit more than you might be used to or might want to for that new home. Exactly right. Hey, let's talk about early retirement. I know that that is something that comes up often in your office and you have a lot of folks uh, uh, come to you and say, Logan, I'd really like to retire early. And based on all your experience in doing this, when someone says they want to retire early, how early are they usually talking about? Yeah, there, I know some of our clients, I mean, early retirement doesn't sound very attractive, but I mean, for some people, it's 60 years old, you know, 62 years old, maybe considered an early retirement. Now, we do have some clients that if they've saved properly and they're positioned correctly, they, they do end up retiring maybe at 55. 57. You know, you do see that from time to time. But historically, early retirement in this past few years... If it's 62, 60 years old, that, that is a somewhat early retirement for a lot of people. I know a lot of people, their dream is, oh, I'm going to work hard and retire at 45 or 50. Well, unfortunately, you know, a lot of the times the math isn't on your side yeah. when we decide to do, when we decide to pull the plug. But we, we are seeing clients run, pull, pull the plug at 55 or 60 and uh, being able to do it uh, successfully. So it is, that is what we're seeing now. 
Yeah. Uh, when somebody says they uh, are, want to retire early, do they usually are they usually realistic? Yeah. I mean, you know, of the folks that you have talked to, how many folks actually can do what they say they want to do? Yeah, it's not all the time, that's for sure. I would say it's probably 50-50. I mean, uh, I have a really good client of ours who actually did pull the plug early, and, you know, it, it was able to be – it's worked out mathematically and emotionally for him, and it was really successful. But you do see those clients when they come in here and, and you know, they say, okay, I've saved $500,000, and I need $100,000 a year income, and I'm going to retire at age 50. That's probably not going to work out, right? There's not enough money to to supply that lifestyle. So I think um, no matter how well you invest it, it's just something that's not realistic. So I think the biggest thing for a lot of you out there, if you're deciding if you want to retire early or not, is to really the ones that are able to retire early, they've done a lot of the groundwork beforehand. You know, it's not uh, all of a sudden they wake up one day and say, I'm going to pull the plug and retire. They've probably been working with us or a financial advisor like us to kind of get ready for that moment, if it's something that's possible or not. That way they're educated. They've done the background and the groundwork to know that, okay, you know, I could pull the plug and I'm not just thinking crazy. Well, when people retire early, do they usually stay retired? In other words, do they uh, stay out of the workforce altogether? You know, it's funny. We I had a statistic I always used to do at our seminars when we do those in-person events. And, uh, you know, it was like 70, I think it was 73% of the people when they retire say they're going to work some type of job in retirement. Yeah. But only 34% do. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of us say, oh, I'll retire early, but I'll get a job and I'll go work part time at the hardware store or the golf course or volunteer. And a lot of people don't. You know, you get retired and all of a sudden you get used to sleeping in instead of waking up at five in the morning. You sleep until seven in the morning and uh you know <laughs> you start you get your little group of friends that you start going to the diner with or going to going to do walks or whatever your cup of tea is but i think a lot of the times we say we're going to do it but most of the time people don't end up working in retirement with that said i do have some clients that 34 <laughs> percent that do work in retirement whether it's volunteer or passion driven job or just something to really get them out of the house so mm-hmm. we do see it uh, those both ways, yeah. but it's not a guarantee for sure. Yeah. You're listening to the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, uh, Regary Financial, and Logan's number is 888-823-PLAN. You call that number and you're going to be able to have a conversation with Logan Sadler, same guy you're on the radio show every week. Again, that number to call, leave your name and phone number, 888-823-PLAN. We're talking about early retirement specifically here, and what are some of the specific challenges of retiring early? Yeah, there, there's a lot of different challenges, I think, for retiring early. I think the biggest one that, you know, as a financial advisor that jumps out is longevity. Yeah. Uh, portfolio longevity is, is a tough one. I mean, you figure someone that retires at age 60 and they're going to live till, you know, age 80, we still have a 20 year retirement we got to plan for. But a lot of the times, as we've talked about several times on the show, people are living a long time. So we're having to plan for maybe age 60 to 85 or 90. And so you figure if we pull the plug at 55, it adds five more years years of longevity onto the onto what the portfolio has to be able to sustain for income and and market risk and all the other things that come along with retirement as well as inflation all those other scary things that that you know really uh, drive a lot of fear to a lot of retirees. But I think the biggest thing is retiring early. And I think it's something where when you retire early, longevity is one of the biggest risks to make sure we have done the right uh, the right planning and the right groundwork to make sure that we're going to have enough money in retirement. I think, you know, a lot of people... I don't know about you know most of the listeners, but most of the people that are coming in, I think their biggest fear is running out of money. Sure, you know that's that's still the number one fear outside of taxes and inflation and healthcare, all the other things that are are very important and scary for retirement. The number one fear is still running out of money. So longevity is one of those things where it's very retiring early. The longevity risk really does increase if not planned for and, and, and covered correctly in a plan. You know, a lot of people listening to the show today and maybe thinking, gee, it would be nice to retire early, but wow, all this stuff is overwhelming. There are so many things you got to think about. How can somebody really know if early retirement is going to work for them? I think really what it all starts with is laying the groundwork. I think, you know, if you're if you're 50 years old or 55 years old or 60 years old and you're getting ready to pull the plug or wanting to get uh, some realistic expectations of if you can retire, give us a call. I think, you know, we could sit down and run those numbers. The biggest thing that I always say, uh, the biggest 
retirement planning topic that I think needs to be covered in any plan is the income plan. That's probably the most important part of retirement. Yes, it's great to say I could retire, but if we don't have an income plan laid out, I mean, it's kind of hard to say how we're going to retire, right? Yeah. Where the money's going to come from to do all the stuff we want to do. So I think it really starts with the groundwork of laying that foundation. I, I could tell you a quick story. Um, we had a client come in who we had talked with on and off throughout the years about getting ready to retire, and, and the client had done very well. He had around a million five put away in retirement, 401ks and things of that sort. Mm-hmm. Client was around 55 years old, and he said, you know what? I'm, I'm done. You know, <laughs> I've, I've done my time. I've worked very hard. And, and uh, he did have kind of one of those grueling jobs, I, could say, I guess you could say, where he was working a lot of hours, and he had no kids. He had no, no, no family, no wife, nothing to take care of. He had a paid for house and he made around $80,000 a year. Yeah. And he said, you know what? I could realistically live off of forty dollars or $50,000 a year with everything paid for and live a very good lifestyle until you know Social Security comes in at 62 and then Medicare down the road at 65. He was able to really kind of say, this is kind of what I'm willing to do. Would it make a difference? And I think that was one of the things where it was very uh, pleasant to work with him and go through this with him because we were able to lay out a groundwork where he was actually able to get more in retirement throughout the years than he probably thought he could get. So I think just having that conversation and understanding that you might have to be willing to take some money off the table it might not be your ideal retirement income, but it might be something where if you set the groundwork like this client did with the paid off home, no debt, none of those things that are going to drag you down or delay that decision. That's where a lot of uh, a lot of the people that are trying to retire early will know, okay, is this really realistic for the long term? Yeah, a realistic retirement plan is not just hoping that things are going to work out. It's actually having a plan where you have things actually written down and uh, you know, you have someone like Logan Sadler help you make sure that you cover all the bases make sure that you take everything into account and Logan it's so easy to get one of those discovery meetings that we talk about all the time and I'm certain you're going to get some phone calls on this Uh, what happens in the discovery meeting yeah if you're one of those clients that's really approaching retirement and has done well saving for retirement and is looking at how do I get a retirement plan together that I think is going to fit my needs and what my family needs that's exactly what the discovery meeting is for it's basically a comprehensive review for those people that have maybe already have a retirement plan, or if you don't have one, it's a great time to come in, sit down, and let's go through the checklist of what needs to be done when planning for retirement. And, uh, you know, really at those meetings, it's a very uh, comprehensive review as far as what you currently have, but it's really a great discovery meeting for us to get to know each other and see if we are a good fit and kind of really lay out the groundwork for what needs to be done with a retirement plan. All of that is not going to cost you a penny and not going to obligate you to do anything at all. Get together with Logan Sadler, have a conversation about your individual scenario, and again, you can do it cost-free. 888-823-PLAN, 888-823-PLAN. Have that discovery meeting, and then you can decide if you'd like to move on from there, if you'd like to work together. And uh, It's um, just that easy and just that simple. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call for Regary Financial with offices in Hammett and Redland. You can meet in either place, or it may just start with a phone call or maybe even a Zoom connection. Whatever you're comfortable with, Logan Sadler will accommodate you. One more time with the number, 888-823-PLAN. This is the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, and we'll be right back with more in just a moment. Do you ever find yourself skipping through countless songs trying to find the perfect one? Yeah, we've been there too, and know it can be frustrating. Much like skipping through the countless advertisements from other financial advisors, it can seem like there's so much misinformation. But here on The Financial Beat, you can rest assured we're providing you with the best information possible. So don't push skip on this show, because we have some important information coming up. Welcome back to The Financial Beat with the one and only Logan Sadler, Vice President, Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial, serving you in Southern California. By the way, if you'd like to find out more about this show and about Regary Financial, about Logan Sadler, you can go to financialbeatradio.com, financialbeatradio.com. And the number to call if you'd like to arrange a one-on-one conversation with Logan about your situation, 888-823-PLAN. 888-823-7526. This show is all about getting you to and through retirement. So important to have a plan. If you don't have a plan, give Logan Sadler's office a call today. 
plan. Let's talk about financial terms. A lot of terms in the financial world that uh, a lot of folks don't understand. For some people, these terms are are unfamiliar, let's say. Uh, Others they may have heard of but don't have a clear understanding of what they mean. What do we need to know about each of these? Uh, Number one on my list here is in-service distribution. What is that and why do we need to know it? Yeah, the in-service distribution, that is one of those confusing terms. There's in-service distribution, in-service rollovers, all those kind of terms when you hear that are typically done through a 401k plan. So if you have a 401k and you need a distribution of some sort. Maybe you're taking income from your 401k. Maybe you're doing an in-service rollover. Those can all sometimes be coded as an in-service distribution. So essentially, it means that you're taking money or or withdrawing money or rolling money over from a 401k. So um, those can be very valuable for a lot of you out there uh, that are doing... uh, When you turn age 59 and a half, those of you listening, you can do what's called an in-service distribution or an in-service rollover. And basically, you could take a distribution from the 401k and roll it directly over to a new IRA and, and of course, keep deferring the tax or if it's a Roth, keep it tax free. But the in-service distribution is really just basically taking a withdrawal or a, a rollover amount from the 401k. So I always tell people, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're 59 and a half years old, there's probably a lot more um, tools out there that you're not aware of with the 401k rolling it over to possibly the IRA. Yep. So definitely something I would love to cover further. But uh, yeah, that's typically what they mean there by in-service distribution. It's impossible for all of us as laymen to know all those things and to keep up to date with all the rules and regulations and new laws and all that sort of thing. And I know that's one thing that you do all the time. It's always a learning process. Things are always changing. And when you're dealing with Logan Sadler at Regary Financial, you can be sure that he's on top of that situation. Another one I want to ask you about here is something that we talk about a lot on this show, a Roth conversion. What exactly is a Roth, and, and what do you mean when you say Roth conversion? Yeah, that's a great great point there. We'll start with the basics. I think, like you said, Ron, what is a Roth? A Roth IRA or Roth 401k, uh, for those of you that don't know, a traditional 401k or traditional IRA, you're putting money in that you haven't paid tax on yet. Right, so you're putting five or ten thousand dollars a year into the 401k or into an IRA, and basically uh, that money has not been taxed yet, and it grows 100% tax deferred. Now, those are a great tool for a lot of you that might be high income and and being able to defer some of the tax. It is a great option to keep income low and to get tax breaks now. The downfall with that and why a Roth conversion or why a Roth IRA or 401k makes sense is because we have a lot of people that come in here that have a million or two million or three million dollars now in that tax deferred bucket, which means when they retire, all of that money is now going to be taxable. Now, a lot of you listening to the show, and I know we've asked a lot of you listeners when you come in, and a lot of you are concerned about taxes going up in the future. So if you're putting all your money in a tax deferred investment, then that means that you have no control on what tax rates are in the future. Meaning, well, whatever tax rates are, if they're higher, you're going to have to pay a higher tax rate because all of your money is tax deferred. So what the Roth IRA and Roth 401k allow you to do is it allows you to put money away now and pay taxes at your current rate and allow that money to grow 100% tax free. So when you retire, let's say you have a million dollars in your 401k and a million dollars in your Roth 401k or Roth IRA. Now you have some tax control, right? You have a million dollars that is all tax free or $500,000, whatever the amount is you get over there. It's a really big advantage to a lot of our clients when they retire to have some sort of tax free money. Now to what the Roth conversion is, is it's basically, let's say you have a million dollars in your 401k. All right. And let's say you're 60 years old. All right, Ron? All right. Now, how this works is, let's say you make, let's say you make $100,000 per year and you, um, you've married, you file jointly, you're in the 22% tax bracket roughly, okay? Okay. That means the tax bracket goes from 83000 to 178000 So technically, you can go up that much more and still be only paying 22% tax on your money. Mm -hmm. So a Roth conversion, essentially, in this exact example, you could do roughly $78,000 that year of a Roth conversion and still only pay 22% tax on it now and let that money grow tax-free. So it is one of those 
tools that we do use for a lot of our clients when we're planning because a lot of you guys come in here with you know five hundred thousand a million dollars two million dollars in all tax deferred investments which it's okay to have some tax deferred but I love to have tax control in retirement and the Roth conversion allows us for a lot of our clients to get some tax free money over there I always tell people it doesn't matter if it's fifty grand or if it's five hundred grand we get over there or five million dollars you get over there some tax free money is better than none if we could do it in a tax-free manner, which is sometimes we're able to do through the Roth conversion. And if you have a tax-deferred account and it has a million dollars in it, you might be a little surprised when you go to take that money out because <laughs> yeah. it's not really a million dollars because Uncle Sam's going to take his share of it. That's No, sure. you're totally right, Ron. Like you said, a million dollars might only be worth six or seven. You know, yeah. And so yeah. I think the Roth conversion, for those of you listening, if you are one of those um, higher net worth individuals with $500,000, a million dollars, or $2 million in your 401k and you haven't explored this strategy or don't understand that concept of about why it would work for you, give us a call. I'd love to sit down and show you how, how this could be implemented. It's a very wise thing to do to consider a Roth. So, hey, give Logan Sadler's office a call and uh, have a further conversation about that. It's 888-823-PLAN, 888-823-PLAN. You can actually sit down one-on-one with Logan and explore all the possibilities. Another word that comes up in conversation a lot these days, especially in the last few years, fiduciary, uh, F-I-D-U-C-I-A-R-Y. A lot of people don't know what that means. You are no. a fiduciary, and I think it would be great if you could explain that. Yeah, that, that you're right. That is another term that some people have heard of, have no idea what the real meaning of it is. Basically, uh, to, cut, to cut to the chase, it just means that as an advisor, if you are a fiduciary, you should be acting in the best interest of your client. And so like you said, Ron, I am a fiduciary where it means that we are, when we look at your guys' retirement plan, when you come in, we don't have one topic already. Okay, we do insurance, so you're gonna get an insurance product. Or we only deal in the market, you're gonna get an ETF fund, right? It's something where you really, as a fiduciary, you need to take all of the different comprehensive planning techniques into account and make sure you're creating a plan for that client that fits their best interest, not your best interest, not what makes the advisor the most money or what is best for their firm. You know, it's really, you need to put all that aside. And a lot of advisors do really well at this and some uh, not so much. And so it's something that's very important to make sure that your advisor is putting your needs first. I always tell people, you'll know if you have a fiduciary or not. If you go, if you look at their book of business or you look at their clientele, if they only have insurance products, they're probably just an insurance agent, right? If they only have stocks, I mean, you go meet with your advisor every time it's, oh, the market, the market, they probably don't do insurance. And I think in today's world, most of the clients we're meeting with that are high net worth investors that listen to the radio show or come to our events or are referred by a friend. I think a lot of the times the people nowadays are looking for more than that just traditional insurance agent or that traditional broker. They're looking for that advisor that could really put their best interest first and give them the information and the solutions they need uh, across the board, whether that's insurance, long-term care, you know, uh, annuities, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, all these different things. And that's what a real fiduciary should be able to provide is that best value for the client and really putting the client's needs and the goals of that client first. If you sit down and talk with a financial person and the first person, first thing that that person says is, you know, here's a product for you that I think would be would be great, you know, and they're just trying to sell you something. I mean, they're probably not a true advisor. They're more of a broker and, uh, you know, definitely not uh, a person that has your best interests at heart because, you know, what Logan Sadler does is get to know you, get to know your hopes and desires when it comes to retirement planning, and he takes everything into account. Uh, what about RMDs? Uh, RMDs, <laughs> you know, we, we talk about that a lot on the show, but uh, there may be some folks who don't fully understand that. What is an RMD? RMD. Yeah, an RMD is something that a lot of you guys, like you said, Ron, that that might be one of the the topics that is probably most confusing for a lot of retirees because a lot of you have heard, man, when I turn 70 and a half or when I turn 60 or when I turn whatever age, don't I have to take money out of my accounts? The answer is yes, you do, and it's called your RMD. At age currently at the at the time of this show, okay, it's at age seventy two. Mm-hmm. So when you're seventy two years old, Uncle Sam says, Okay, you have money put away in a four oh one K. So do you remember me talking a few few minutes ago about that uh, Roth conversion strategy? It kind of ties into this sometimes. 
any money in a in what's called a qualified account, mm-hmm. meaning a four hundred one k or an IRA or a four hundred three b, any of those any of those fancy letters, basically. That means that age 72, whether you're touching that money or not, you, you now have to begin withdrawing a certain percentage. And that percentage goes up each year. Yeah. So some of our clients that have maybe good real estate investments or a good pension or they're fine income-wise, they don't normally touch their 401k sometimes until later on in their lifetime. Now, where the RMD comes into play is, like I said, whether you want to or not, you have to, at age 72, begin withdrawing that percentage, okay? Now, what that might do is push you into that higher tax bracket. Mm-hmm. So a lot of our clients, what they don't know is that Roths don't have an RMD. So it's another way with those Roth conversions to sometimes with our, again, our higher net worth clients where we could strategize to sometimes limit that RMD or sometimes get rid of the RMD by doing those Roth conversions. So the RMD is one of those uh, confusing uh, concepts out there. But essentially, if you have a million dollars in your 401k or traditional IRA at age 72, whether you want to or not, you have to be withdrawing that fixed percentage out. And again, it increases each year. So it's something you really got to calculate and make sure you've uh, factored all that in because it's something that's coming whether whether you want it to or not. Yeah, and even if you don't need the money, you may say, I don't need this money. I don't want to withdraw it. You don't have a choice. The government yep. says you got to do it. And if you don't do it, there's a 50% penalty. So, you know, it's a pretty yeah, serious Yeah, they, they, they get you. When Uncle Sam says you got to do something, he normally kind of means it, right? <laughs> exactly. Well, one more I wanted to ask you about here, uh, Logan, and that is risk aversion. Uh, what is that all about? Yeah, you know, what risk aversion is, is basically, it's an investor that typically doesn't like to take risk. It's a it's a type of strategy where most people are like, you've heard the term maybe risk adverse. Uh, risk aversion is very similar where a lot of clients aren't wanting to take risks. So it's something where I don't say it's a bad, it's not a bad person or a bad type of investment strategy, but it's typically some something that where a client is not looking to uh, look at risk. They're wanting to really offset risk and keep a lot of that risk away. They're risk adverse and they're not looking to uh, put themselves in a situation to take on a lot of risk. Yeah. Well, you know, one key word that you had just a few minutes ago was strategy. There is a lot of strategy involved when it comes to your retirement accounts and, uh, you know, getting to and through retirement, a lot of strategy. It's really hard to do it on your own. You need a financial professional who can help you uh, weed through all of that stuff and understand all that stuff. That's why uh, you need to call Logan Sadler. 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. He does a great job of also explaining all these terms and not trying to talk over anybody's head like so many financial persons might do. 888-823-7526. Call that number today. Leave your name and phone number. You'll get a call back, and then you can arrange to have your one-on-one conversation with Logan Sadler, same guy you hear on the radio show. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call. Remember, there is no cost and no obligation. I'm Ron Stutz along with Logan Sadler. You're listening to The Financial Beat. Hope you're having a good day today. We appreciate your being here and we'll be right back. We're back now with more of The Financial Beat. Logan Sadler is on the radio. Go tell everybody you know. 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. Your number to call if you'd like to have a one-on-one conversation with Logan Sadler. It's called a discovery meeting. You can discover things about him. He can discover things about you. Get to know each other a little bit and decide if you'd like to work together. It's that simple. You're going to get a lot of information from this sit-down conversation. It could be uh, via Zoom or maybe just a phone call. Or maybe you might want to get to the point where you come into one of the offices in Hemet and Redlands. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make it happen. Hey, Logan, before we go on, we should mention that in addition to the radio show, you you have a podcast which is extremely informative. Uh, how do folks uh, get that podcast, and what kind of things do you talk about? Yeah, if you if you've missed the radio show, or maybe you're listening to it right now, and wanted to catch some other episodes, everything's recorded and uploaded and put onto podcasts. So you basically can go over there and check out over 50 different episodes of our podcast, where we break down different topics about retirement planning, retirement education, all these different uh, taxes, all these different things that are very important to a lot of you listening to the show right now. So head over to wherever you download podcasts. That might be Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you download those. You can go over there and type in the Financial Beat 
with Logan Sadler and check it out at your convenience. In your never-ending quest to inform everybody out there about financial matters, <laughs> uh, yes. there, there's another thing that you're using uh, quite effectively and a lot of people enjoy it, YouTube videos. Tell us about those. Yeah, we started a YouTube channel a few months back, and it's been such a great opportunity. Uh, A lot of you listening to the show might be what I like to call uh, more visual. So if if you're listening to this show and you see some of these topics, you could actually head over to the Financial Beat YouTube channel and see a lot of these topics broken down with visuals, where we'll spend more time on maybe the overconfidence of retirement creating an income plan. How often should you meet with your advisor? A lot of those topics we're adding each week to the Financial Beat YouTube channel. So head over to the Financial Beat YouTube channel and click subscribe and get all those alerts for our up-to-date content each week. And I got to compliment you on those. Uh, You do a really great job and I hope everybody will check them out. I got a quote of the week here for you. And I don't know who said it, but it makes a lot of sense if you think about it. The poor have more children, but the rich have more relatives. (laughs) (laughs) That that is funny. Yeah, it it is true. I know uh, the the more money you have, the more aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, cousins, all this stuff that all of a sudden have loved you a very long time, right? And uh, are all of a sudden your best friend. You're going to all of a sudden have a lot of long lost relatives coming out of the woodwork if they find out you have a lot of money. So, you know, everybody wants to get theirs. And Oh, yeah. Step step brothers and all this stuff all of a sudden, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, let's talk about uh, not just investments. Uh, that would okay. be a good title for this segment of our conversation today. There's a lot more to retirement planning than just picking investments. A lot of people may think that that's what you do, but that's not actually the case. Let's discuss a few areas of retirement planning that come with some money mighty big decisions to make. First of all, I know that you specialize in getting to know folks and finding out about their lifestyle and what is involved in that and why is it so important? Yeah, no, definitely. We'll jump right into that. And I think, like you said in the very beginning, Ron, most of you guys out there maybe have met with a financial salesman or maybe you met with a, you know, one of these wirehouse firms where you really didn't get that customized experience and you got somebody that really was just trying to maybe push a product and not somebody that under, was trying to understand who you are and what you're really, really trying to accomplish. And like you said, in our job, uh, to do our job efficiently, I think people want nowadays, they want more than just a traditional broker or, or insurance agent. They want someone that's really going to look at their overall plan. And there's a lot more than that than just stocks and bonds. I think if you have one of those portfolios where your advisors only ever talked about how good this stock or bond is for you, you're not looking at the big picture. And like you said, Ron, I think what it comes down to really with understanding the client, number one is lifestyle. What is your general spending habits? I always like to ask people, what is your experience with money? Have you had a great experience with money or have you had a bad experience with money? Are you one of those people where you stick to a budget or do you blow up the budget every month? You know, those general spending habits are very important when trying to structure a retirement plan because let's say we get you to an income of, let's say, $10,000 a month in retirement and you say, okay, I think I could do that. But I look at your current spending habits and some months you spend $20,000 a month and some months you spend fifteen or five or six, you know, not knowing your general spending habits uh, doesn't allow us to know how efficient or how effective that retirement plan will be. So knowing your habits with money are very important. Yeah. The, the, you know, I think that's one thing that a lot of advisors don't even touch on. What What is your experience with money? Are you good with money? Are you bad with money? Do you like the market? Do you not? You know, all these different things that, that really do come into play. And another thing that, that, that figures into that whole equation is, uh, you know, you may be one of these people who, uh, once you retire, you want to travel all the time. You want to travel all over the world. World. Maybe you'd rather stick to close to home most of the time and you have certain hobbies that you want to pursue and those hobbies could be expensive. If you want to go play golf six days a week, that's going to cost you a lot of money. <laughs> and, and, and also one thing that Logan finds out about is uh, your physical activity. Do you, do you like to play golf or tennis or, or, or whatever the case may be? Do you like to run? Whatever it is, you know, those are all things that fit into your lifestyle. Very oh, important yeah. to know and they certainly affect your your, your money situation. You're right on point there, Ron. I think, like you said, I have some clients where they, they say, hey, Logan, you know, we want to do this, that, and the other in retirement. And I'm saying, okay, your travel budget is going to be fifteen or $20,000 really? per year, right? I mean, and so that's something, obviously, we have to calculate into the retirement plan. Yeah. Uh, hobbies, like you said, I have a lot of clients where they have very, very expensive hobbies. Like you said, golf, being a very beginner golfer myself, I know it's an expensive hobby. And so if you're going to go golf four days a week, you know, we got to set up a budget to where we can make sure we have that 
able to fit in their retirement plan. And then there's also a whole group of other people that say, I don't want to do any of that. You know, I don't, I don't need to travel. I've done all that. I don't need to play golf. I just really want to have what we call one of those more relaxing and slower paced lifestyles where we're really going to enjoy uh, family time. So you really got to make sure that as the advisor, we really got to make sure we're understanding what is our expectation of this lifestyle, uh, whether it's approaching retirement, as well as what is it going to be like when we transition to retirement? I think that's a really big missed opportunity that a lot of advisors don't spend the time to understand. You may say, hey, I just want to take it easy when I retire, sleep late and not go anywhere or not have to get up early in the morning and go to work and all that kind of stuff. (laughs) I've seen it. I've seen it. (laughs) Exactly. Hey, another big topic of conversation, and I know it's something that you spend a lot of time talking with your clients about, is Social Security. Uh, When to start it is the first thing, and that's the thing that a lot of people have difficulty deciding. Yeah, I always. it's amazing to me how many people you know, we'll just kind of make a decision on social security. They've never met with an advisor, never really kind of, never really put a whole bunch of thought into it. They just say, okay, I turned 62. I probably should just take it so that way I can get as much out as I can before I pass away. Well, I understand that thought process, right? The whole point of Social Security is I want to get as much out of that sucker as I can before I pass away. That is that is the goal. But you want to do so efficiently. There is a lot of different strategies on when to start Social Security that are better. I, I run uh, a lot of our clients, what we're doing when we're doing our planning, we're covering this in our plan because we need to know mathematically when do we need to break even. If we took it at 62, here's how long it would take to break even. Uh, if we took it at 65, here's, what, here's how long it would take to break even. There's a lot of these uh, points where we need to know when to start it. The other part of it, though, is understanding what, what makes the most sense financially as well as from a, from a long-term planning perspective. A lot of you out there don't necessarily need the Social Security right at 62. You might be working. So then it's not, not a good idea to listen to your neighbor or a friend or a cousin. You really want to make sure you're looking at this from a lot of different strategies to make sure it makes the most sense. The, the other one, Ron, I know a lot of people don't really spend much time knowing is this, the spousals. You know, I, a lot of people don't know that if you're taking Social Security, let's say, let's say John gets $2,000 a month and let's say Betty gets 1500 a month mm-hmm. okay okay if something happens to john she doesn't get both of them she loses hers and would get the higher amount which would have been john's two thousand dollars a month yeah. so it's one of those strategies where sometimes we'll delay uh the breadwinner social security um and take the the spouses who might not be as much earlier to let that bigger one grow because that might be a huge benefit to the spouse if something happens to John in that yeah. circumstance. So sure. there's all these, I don't like to call them games, but there's all these kind of what ifs with Social Security that you really got to handle and make sure that you're, and you're looking at it from more than just one perspective. I think the biggest thing with Social Security is a lot of people don't know it's one of their biggest retirement assets. So I always tell people it's funny because if you have $2 million in your 401k, you talk to an advisor or two about that, or you, you really have met with your advisor several times and talked about income strategies, tax predictions, all these things. But with Social Security, some people just say, yeah, I think I'll just take it today. You know? <laughs> they don't put a lot of that thought in there. And uh, the next biggest one, which Ron, I know me and you talk about all the time, is tax strategies. Yeah. Um, there's so many people out there where you know, let's say you're 62 years old, you're making $150,000 a year and you just feel like it's, you know what, I think I'm going to turn on social security. It's one of those things where a lot of people don't know that your social security is now taxed. If you're not full retirement age, if you make over a certain threshold, that threshold is very low. So that client making a hundred and some thousand dollars a year, who's taking social security. Yeah. He's getting that monthly benefit, but he's probably losing more than half of it due to taxes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a lot more that goes into this than just, than, and just uh, you know, deciding when's a good day to take it. You really got to look at when's the most efficient time to start it, looking at the different spousal options, as well as factoring in tax-wise, okay, here's what we need to do to net the most, not just get the most, to net the most. And that one word keeps coming up, and that is strategy. There's a lot of strategy to all this kind of stuff. And so that's why it's so important to talk to someone like Logan Sadler, 888-823-PLAN. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call for Gregory Financial. You can set up a time to have a one-on-one conversation, a discovery meeting, if you will, no cost and no obligation. We talked about uh, your lifestyle. Uh, That's one thing that Logan wants to get familiar with so he can help you specifically. Social Security, also pensions. And uh, there are some things that you need to handle right when it comes to pensions as well. Oh, yeah. That's a huge one where 
Um, you know, we work with a lot with a lot of different nurses at, you know, Kaiser, Loma Linda, a lot of these different hospitals out here, as well as a lot of the different Edison uh, and, and utility workers. They are, they are actually able to do what's called a lump sum on their pension. A lot of them can take either a monthly benefit where they'll say, OK, you know, we'll give you twenty thousand dollars a year uh, forever. And if you pass away, your spouse gets half or, or in some cases gets none, depending on how you elect it. Now, what a lot of them don't know is you might be able just to take a lump sum distribution of, let's say, maybe $500,000 and generate pretty dang close to that same amount or more in some cases as a pension. But if you pass away, the rest of it goes to your spouse or goes to your kids. It's part of your estate. Yeah. So pensions are one of those uh, topics we deal a lot in analysis, uh, looking at the analysis of the pensions because, yes, a lot of people like what they say, oh, Logan, but I don't want to move my pension and put it in the market. I just want to move my, I just want to take a payment and have it guaranteed for the rest of my life. But I would also like it, now that you mentioned that, I would also like that to go to my spouse or my kids if I passed away early. Well, guess what? That sounds a lot like a fixed index annuity, right? Yes, <laughs> That's what I tell people all the time. You know, there's more than just the stock market. Um, fixed index annuities are a great option for some people that want that guaranteed payout. Again, it doesn't have to be for all of the money or all your assets, but for that pension payout, it might be a good option because what you could do is take a lump sum of $500,000 in this example, move it directly over to the fixed index annuity, and then begin payments for life. So it'll pay you out a fixed amount just like a pension, but if something happens to you, that 500000 or whatever's left in the account would go to your beneficiaries. So, you know, it's kind of like getting that, uh, checking all the boxes, I guess you could say, because it's one of those scenarios where you got the payout you wanted. It wasn't going to be volatile in the market. You weren't going to lose any money due to the market, but it was going to give you guaranteed cash flow for life. And if something happened to you, it had those beneficiary options on there. So there's a lot out there for people that have those pensions that are that are able to get a lump sum. And you really got to do those, look over those options carefully because typically you can't undo those situations. Yeah, it's so important to make the right decision because as you just said, I mean, in most cases, there's nothing you can do. Once you make one decision, you got to stick with that. And, you know, that may cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, oh, yeah. just depending on the situation. There are certain home-related issues, like uh, in retirement, wh where are you going to live? You're going to stay in the same house? You're going to move? What are you going to do? And uh, Logan Sadler is fully equipped to talk to you about all of those things. Yeah. Those of you listening to the show in California, when you guys come in and meet with us, whether it's Zoom or in person, I always tell people, you know, so is planning on moving out of state one of your <laughs> one of your topics? Just because <laughs> just about everybody we talk with, they seem to be kind of relocating. So it is something where we got to look at these house issues and say, are we downsizing? Are we going to be relocating? Um, do we have, a, are, is a reverse mortgage on the house or is that an option or what, what, what type of scenarios do we need to look at the home related issues? I have some clients where, um, you know, they have a lot of these different factors on on their mind as far as maybe the kids are out of the house they have this 5,000 square foot home and they only need about 1200 square feet you know so um, unfortunately you can't cut off part of your house so you might want to relocate to something smaller so yeah. there's so many different circumstances and I think a lot of that has to do with a good retirement plan because if you're not covering all of this and all of a sudden you just wake up one day and want to do this, that, or the other, it's very, very important you've had these conversations and made sure that you've looked at how it will impact your, your retirement. It might in some cases help it. It might in some cases put some strain on it. But it's really important you look at all those different things. The other, I touched on it real quick, was the reverse mortgage. Yeah. Uh, some of you guys out there, um, I've seen reverse mortgages be very good for some clients where, hey, this makes a lot of sense in your situation and it, it would be a benefit to you. Go talk to somebody. I have, I have a specialist we work with who, who deals in those if it fits the right client. I have some clients where they should stay way away from those, right? It makes no sense for their for their uh, circumstance. So you really want to make sure you have an advisor, again, that's looking at some of these issues and, and really kind of walking through the steps of what might be a good uh, a good decision for you. Yeah, a lot of people, you know, when they're retiring and they're, they're getting older, uh, you know, you want a one-level house that's a lot smaller where, you know, there's very little upkeep and all that sort of thing. And, of course, with real estate prices as high as they are these days, that factors <laughs> in and, and everything else. Like we talked earlier, we talked about mortgage rates and, and all of that. So a lot to be taken into account. The last thing that a lot of people consider, some people don't even think about this, or I guess probably more often they don't want to think about this, health questions. Chances yeah. are you're going to have some expensive health care needs down the road at some point. 
Yeah, I think a lot of people are kind of shocked sometimes when we're doing our discovery meeting and we're going over, you know, lifestyle, Social Security, pensions, home issues, and all of a sudden we throw out there, have we talked about health care or, or any type of risk out there related health? And a lot of them go, oh, I didn't know advisors did that. You know, and it's like, well, yeah, that's obviously part of retirement. So we're going to look at the health care risk. I mean, is, is, is there a bloodline that maybe lasts a lot longer than the other one? And that's called longevity risk. If there's one issue where, you know what, my husband's family, none of them have lived past 60. Well, we might need to place some life insurance in there to, to make the plan go longer to fit what we needed to do. You know, there's a lot of different issues that come up where it's very important to talk about that. The other one is, is the cost of traditional health care. If we're retiring early, you know, how are we going to cover health care costs till that age 65? As well as the other biggest one is, have you guys not talked about long-term care? Yeah. Some of you um, listening to the show, you know, you may have a very nice estate, you may have you know million, two million, three million dollars or more, and uh, you probably are very proud of that and have worked your butt off for it. You probably don't want to spend you know a hundred thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars a month or whatever the case is on long-term care or nursing home. So it's something where you really got to make sure we factor that in. Maybe looked at a policy, maybe looked at some other solutions to see what fits. But it's really important as as the advisor that we're having these important conversations related to to healthcare because it might be one of the biggest facets to the retirement plan that could really put a kink in it. I uh, unfortunately we have several clients that we've been dealing with throughout the years where you know unfortunately Alzheimer's or or, or un, un, uh, unexpected health happens to a client and they're forced into a nursing home early. You know maybe before they even got to really enjoy retirement. But if you don't have some type of plan for covering that long-term care expense, it, it could be absolutely crucial. So, um, you know, it's really important. And I appreciate you guys listening to each of these topics, because these are probably some of the most important uh, topics that is not just about what stock to buy or what's the hot tip of the day. You know, it's really important. And we call these more advanced planning techniques, because you really got to make sure that your retirement plan has each of these topics covered in it. Because at some point, or another, all of this will come up into your guys' retirement plan in some facet or another. And you want to make sure you have the right advisor there to go through all that with you. And Logan, when it comes to health care, isn't it true that about 70% of us are going to need some form of long-term care uh, before we uh, check out of here? Yeah, it, it is. It's a staggering statistic. I, yeah. I always tell people, the clients, I, we, we always bring it up. Like I said, I'm not a huge uh, pushy salesman or anything crazy like that. But when we look at the statistics, I always tell people, if, if there was a 70% chance you'd win the lotto, you'd probably go out and buy a lotto ticket. You know, <laughs> but, but if I told you that there's a pretty good chance, you know, 60 or 70% of the time that you could spend some time in a long-term care facility, a lot of people don't think anything about it. You know? yeah. So it's something where you really, like you said, Ron, with those statistics, we really got to make sure we've covered that in the retirement plan and identified if we're going to pay for it, how are we going to pay for it? Where's the money going to come from? So many things to think about when it comes to getting to and through retirement. And so many folks are going to make that phone call to your office, Logan, and get a discovery meeting. What happens in the discovery meeting the first time you talk to someone? Yeah, the, fir the first conversation really is, is is just a getting to know you. A lot of you guys are uh, that are calling in are, are really kind of done well and you save well for retirement. And that's our specialty for those clients that have saved very well for retirement and are looking for ways to transition into retirement and maximize their retirement savings. That retirement nest egg that you've worked you know 30 or 40 years for, and you're looking for an advisor to help navigate through the retirement experience more than just, hey, you know, here's the best stock to buy. No, we need to look at more. We need to look at the full comprehensive plan. We need to look at health care. We need to look at long term care, stocks, bonds, real estate, all that stuff is a part of the plan. But you are wanting an advisor that might dig more into the details and be able to help transition into retirement. Uh, that's exactly what that discovery means for. So give us a call, come in and uh, spend an hour with me on uh, in our office or at one of our at our Zoom, and uh, we'd be happy to get that discovery meeting underway and see if we're a good fit. 888-823-PLAN. 888-823-PLAN. That is your number to call. Uh, call it today during the show. Leave your name and phone number. You'll get a call back from the good folks at Regary Financial, and then you can arrange a convenient time to have your conversation with Logan Sadler. Yep, he's not going to put you off on anybody else. Same guy you hear on the radio show every week, on the podcast, on the YouTube channel. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make that happen. It's important to remember that Logan Sadler works with all three generations.
conditions of some of the client families. Many clients have been with the firm for more than 25 years. Regary Financial has been around a long time. Logan Sadler would love to get to know you. No cost and no obligation. You're listening to The Financial Beat, and the beat will go on in just a moment. You're listening to The Financial Beat, the show that makes sure your financial plan has the perfect pitch. We're back now with more of The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, VP and Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. Hope you're having a good day today in Southern California. Uh, Logan's offices in Hemet and Redlands. You can get a Zoom meeting going or a phone conversation uh, with no cost and no obligation simply by calling 888-823-PLAN. Call that number, leave your name and phone number, you'll get a call back, and then you can take care of it. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call. One more time, 888-823-PLAN. Remember that Regary Financial has great partnerships with local CPAs, attorneys, real estate agents, mortgage lenders, Medicare specialists, all to help offer well-rounded guidance in all things financial for their clients. Uh, Logan Sadler takes everything into account. Going to the mailbag today, first question we have is from Penny in Redlands, and Penny says, I've been retired for about three years, and even though I've been making withdrawals from my IRA, the account balance is actually higher than it was when I first retired. But even seeing this, I still can't shake the fear that I'm going to run out of money eventually. Logan, is this common? Yeah, great, great question, Penny. Thanks for writing in, and and uh, yeah, it is common. Uh, earlier in this segment, I actually was talking about how and how uh, that fear of running out of money is still one of the number one concerns for most retirees. Um, you know, yes, thank God the market uh, so far has been on your side. Where, and I'm assuming that's where you're at, where the returns have been great over the last few years. So yes, your account balance should be growing. The biggest thing I would look at, Penny, is always just make sure that you've in the proper risk, you have the proper cash flow to where if the market wasn't as great for a few years, you would still be okay. Um, that's one of the only ways I think a lot of our clients uh, tend to get that peace of mind is having different income streams. I think uh, knowing that you have maybe one, two, three, maybe five different sources of income from different types of investments is typically the best way to kind of li- not get rid of the fear, but sometimes limit that fear of, okay, you know what? I know I have different different investments that are going to perform differently in different market situations, as well as I have maybe four or five, like I said, or maybe six different types of cash flow in retirement. So that's one of the only ways I think you could really uh, kind of iron out that fear penny of running out of money. But that's a great question. I'm glad your accounts are growing. Glad things are going well. But give a call. I'd love to dive more into depth and show you what I'm talking about as far as uh, making sure we have different income streams in retirement. All right. Good question, uh, Penny. Thank you so much. And let's go to James now, who uh, sends us a question from Palm Springs. And James says, I was planning to retire next year at age 65. But my company has asked me to take the lead on a project that would take our team at least two years to complete. What would be the benefits of working until 67 instead of 65? Yeah, great question, James. It sounds like, well, then thanks again. For, thank you for writing in. And it sounds like you're pretty valuable to the company, which is always, <laughs> always a good thing. I think the biggest thing is the advantages are kind of pretty simple if you look at it and stand back where, um, yeah, you're going to have Social Security growing for another two years. You're going to have your investments growing another two years. Hopefully, you're adding to those investments as well through the 401k or higher rate, whatever your investments are. So I think an extra two years of delayed growth as well as contributions can be uh, a big difference in the retirement plan. And I think uh, allowing a lot of people that are getting close to retirement, I always try to encourage them to save more cash, put more money away because in retirement, you'll want some cash to be able to grab and go travel or go do what you want to do. So I think having those two extra years of time, it might be worth it. You might be one of those clients that says, Logan, I have more than enough money. I'm ready to go enjoy my life. Then that's a different conversation. But I think the biggest thing is let's give us a call. Let's sit down and let's crunch those numbers and see uh, if that extra two years is really worth it. I think that'd be really uh, the factors and where I would go with this conversation is let's take a deep dive and see if that extra two years is really worth it financially and emotionally for you. Yeah, good questions today from Penny and James and a lot of other folks out there have questions. And if you like the opportunity to talk to Logan Sadler one-on-one, not just here on the radio show, but one-on-one in his office or a Zoom call or whatever the case may be, then you can get a lot more specific. He can get a lot more specific with his response to you. Uh, Just call uh, the number that I'm going to give out in just a moment here. But Logan, uh, again, for the folks who may be listening for the very first time today, how does that discovery meeting work? 
Yeah, those of you that are your first time listening, we always appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by and stumbling upon the financial beat. And really what we offer is that financial uh, discovery meeting. It's really our intro meeting to really just get a, get to know you guys and see what you're trying to do. It's really designed for those of you that are approaching retirement, have saved well, and are looking for different ways to maybe get that more advanced uh, retirement, maybe get that more comprehensive retirement than just, uh, maybe you want more than just a stock or maybe you want more than just uh, one investment. You're looking for someone that can provide the full array of financial services to really make sure you're maximizing that retirement. So if you're interested in that and you're looking for somebody that, again, thinks outside the box and really uh, takes that comprehensive mindset, give us a call. I'd love to sit down, spend an hour with you either at our office or on Zoom and see if we're a good fit. And that's exactly what that discovery meeting is for. 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. Call that number, leave your name and phone number. You'll get a call back and then you can arrange the time to have your discovery meeting with Logan Sadler. No cost, no obligation. 888-823-PLAN. Logan, it has been my pleasure to hang out with you for a while today. Good show. You passed out a lot of good information today. And I hope that between now and the time we get together again, everybody will check out your podcasts and also your videos on YouTube. Yeah, appreciate it, Ron, and uh, appreciate all the all the followers following along the radio show, the podcast, and the YouTube channel. And I just uh, look forward to bringing you guys this information each week, and uh, we will talk with you guys soon. Thank you for stopping by. Join us again next time for the next edition of the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Regary Financial. The information provided is for educational purposes only and is not intended as investment advice for anyone. All information discussed is believed to be from reliable sources. However, we make no representation as to its completeness or accuracy. The views presented today are those of BD Financial Group and do not necessarily represent the views of Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC. The opinions expressed are subject to change without notice and do not constitute financial tax or legal advice. Please consult with your financial professional before executing any financial strategy. Investment advisory and financial planning services are offered through Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Alpha Star and BD Financial Group are independent entities. SEC registration does not constitute an endorsement of the firm by the commission, nor does it indicate that the advisor has attained a particular level of skill or ability.